this Coco One is here for a video upgrade and uh, it has 16K of RAM, so while we're at it, we're gonna upgrade to 64K of RAM. But before you can do that, you have to update the old Color Basic ROM from the original, uh, I think it was Color Basic 1.0. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, also, the, the keyboard is no good in this one, so it's out for diagnosis. Uh, I think this is probably an eboard but it's the one that had this full-size RF shield. And, okay, so there are two ROMs in there. This one had the Color Basic and the Extended Color Basic ROM. Let's see, this one, uh, so this is the, this is Color Basic on the left. It's, I think it's probably 1.0. Here is Extended Color Basic, it says it's Rev 1.1. So, my, my first look at this was uh, boy, they're really close together and uh, a lot of the adapter boards are a little wider than that the space that we have here so I uh, came up with a couple of options and I so at first I made like a really narrow adapter board and then I thought um, maybe I could replace these with a single board that uh, picks up the chip selects of both both slots both sockets and uh, you know, use one ROM, and that way the, the board only has to fit in the space, one board in the space of both of these guys, and uh, and only have to, to use one EEPROM. So in this one, Color Basic is on the left, Extended Color Basic on the right. Okay, here is the next version of the Color Computer One. It reduced size in this RF hat, that's the way I can tell. Uh, now look at this. So, so now we have we still have the two ROMs, but they've they've changed left and right. So now extended color basic is on the left, and color basic's on the right, uh, and the gap is different. It's just a little bit wider now. So if I'm going to make a single board, <laughs> if I'm going to make a single board to fit uh, both sockets simultaneously. It's got to adjust for the two different widths, and now uh, it's swapping left and right positions. Okay. Well, what about in a Color Computer 2? With the introduction of the Coco 2, I believe this was the first model. It had the Melty keyboard. And let's check the situation on its ROMs. Okay, so still two sockets, and uh, I think I've removed, uh, this was probably the Color Basic one here in U12 and Extended Color Basic in U13. Um, looks like it maybe is a similar gap. I think if I could come up with something for, uh, for both of the Coco 1s, it would probably work here also. Okay, let's look at another Coco 2. Okay, this Coco 2 was about in the middle of the era of the Coco 2s. And let's see what the situation was. Okay, by this time, they had gone to a 28-pin socket for the ROM, where you could still install the 24-pin or the 28-pin. And there's some jumper wires there for the uh, either the 8K or the 16K ROM. Um, so. Um, this, this one has the 28-pin ROM soldered in, and, uh, and there were some models where it came with a socket, and the 24-pin was installed, and the thought was you could upgrade to a, uh, a ROM, a 28-pin ROM that contains both Color Basic and Extended Color Basic. I went after two possible solutions. This one is a 24 to 28-pin adapter board, and these are common. But with this one, I tried to make it as narrow as I could practically make it. And uh, there's a, four jumpers in here that uh, basically just tie the uh, certain enables and address unused address pins uh, to ground. Okay, with the second one, I went with the idea of can I use one ROM to, to fill the need for both sockets? So, um, What's going on here is that the, 
the 24 pin socket is here for the right position the socket on the right now for the socket on the left there are four possible positions here you can place a pin that will reach over into the left socket and I'll show you this installed in a Coco one in just a minute but you depending on the spacing between your two sockets you can choose one of these four positions and I, th I think most of them seem to be either one two or three so the closer positions and uh, there's some choice here so you can decide determine which is, is the best fit depending on the width between your two sockets uh, there is a uh, logic IC right here that's it's the four gates uh, four NOR gates and uh, this implements the the logic that selects either ROM 1 or ROM 2 and combines it into one chip select uh, and then there's a jumper here to choose which side is color basic on is color basic ROM on the left position then you'd you'd place the jumper on one and two and if color basic is to the right socket you'd place the jumper on two and three there are two little tricks that this board accomplishes one is with the the NOR gates here this 74 LS02 chip and the other trick is with the selection jumper so uh, first with the NOR gates so with with the two ROMs in the system they normally each get A0 through A12 and uh, they get a chip enable chip enable active low okay and uh, the COCO creates, uh, creates the two chip selects there's a ROM 1 enable active low and a ROM 2 enable active low and uh, there's a circuit on the later COCO 2's that combine these two signals into a single chip select so uh, so what you want is you have a, a larger ROM that now has A0 through now A13 and it still just has one chip select and what the the chip on the COCO does is it uh, just combines these two so that either either one of these is selected active low then the combined signal selects this and uh, the the 28 pin socket just picks up address 13 because it can but uh, with my little board solution I had to come up with a trick to uh, to create this address 13 out of the the chip enables so uh, the, the first thing that I did was I I just used the uh, the same 74 LS 02 that uh, creates the combined enable that combines these two into the single chip select uh, and then for uh, when it came for address 13 uh, let's take a look at this extended color basic is uh, sitting at address 8000 and color basic is at 8000 uh, let's convert this hexadecimal into uh, binary that's one uh, the 8 is 100, zero, zero. the A is 1010, zero, zero. and that's for A15 down to A12. And uh, you notice that the, the active address bit there is, is A13. So A13 is effectively selecting either the, the lower address or the higher address of, of ROM. Okay, and, uh, and these two ROM enables. Uh, if we think about them, so ROM 1 enable, um, this is active low, and ROM 2 enable, active low. Uh, so when the address is at 8000, the, the logic on the cuckoo board drives this active low and leaves that disabled. And uh, inversely, when we're at address 8000, this one is active and this one's not active so if you notice this the uh, the ROM 1 enable is behaving the same as address 13 so my idea was to uh, use the the three pin jumper to to select uh, and connect ROM 1 enable to address 13 on the 28 pin ROM 
So, so now it comes to the positioning on the board. So the two sockets on Coco could, could be either be extended color basic on the left and color basic on the right, or they could be swapped. So I just set up my, uh, my jumper here with its three pins so that um, I pick up this select and I pick up this select off of the two sockets. I bring them into the outsides and then this is address 13 going to my ROM chip. So now I can either tie the, uh, the ROM on the left if, if that happens to be uh, this guy, then uh, wherever, basically wherever ROM 1 enable is, uh, that determines which of these two pins I jumper together. Uh, so that's how this little board selects and uh, allows color basic to be either in the left or the right. Here are these two boards built up. So here is the, uh, the simple one that would require two ROMs, but it adapts the 28-pin uh, the ROMs to the 24-pin socket. And then uh, here's the more complicated guy that just needs one ROM for both spots. And uh, the way I set up the jumper is if the color basic ROM is the one on the left, put the jumper on the left. And if color basic's to the right, then put the jumper to the right. Okay, now let's go try uh, try both of these solutions in uh, in the Coco One. Here's the Coco One that I'm upgrading, and uh, let's see, we have U14 and U15. I believe it's usually the lower number is the color basic. So let's put the color basic here. If I'm misremembering, then I'll just need to swap these two and try again. But I think I think this is the way it is. I think color basics on the left. Okay, and I'm using and I'm using that screen way down there. Okay, so here we go. Let's turn this on. And okay, so uh, we have extended color basic 1.1. What version of color basic do we have? Let's execute. 41175 enter okay it's color basic 1.3 okay good okay now let's power off let's install the more complicated little board okay here he is so uh, I've applied the one pin you can see it right there that's the proper spacing for this particular cocoa. And I want to make sure I'm lining that one up at the same time. Looks good there. Okay. Okay. There, that's seated in there. Okay screen's blank. Let's try this. Okay. There's no color on this Coco, by the way. This is getting a video upgrade. Okay, but it's extended color basic 1.1. And let's execute 41175. Enter. And color basic 1.3. So I'm going to do a little more testing with this board because uh, this was just my crazy idea. There could be some other gotchas here, but uh, so far so good. And like I was saying before, um, if color basic is the socket on the left, then the jumper's to the left. That's how I remember that. And that's all for this video. I just wanted a quick demonstration of this. Uh, I, this is probably not the first time that a board like this has been made. I, I'm curious if anyone else has done this before, uh, but this was just a way that uh, I thought of for uh, fitting the board into tight spaces and for only needing one ROM when you're doing the upgrade. Uh, next thing for this Coco One is it's going to get a 64K RAM upgrade and a video output upgrade.